everyone and um, share my immigrant story. I, I am Colombian. Uh, I, my family is actually from a region that not many people know of Colombia. It's called the Llanos Orientales, which are like the um, eastern flatlands, I guess. It's like kind of the Texas of Colombia, uh, but not full of cowboys. Yes, full of cows, <laughs> but very in, rich and in indigenous and in, um, farm working communities and a lot of rivers and a lot of fish as well. Um, so that's where my family comes from. But I grew up in, uh, in Bogota, which is in the Andes. So I have a lot of that mixture between flatlands, jungle and uh, mountain um, culture in me. Um, I, my people are in South America and uh, my people are from the mountains and my people are, you know, from agriculture um, in, in Colombia and in South America. And my people is my daughter yelling <laughs> outside the door. <laughs> so my apologies for that. Uh, well, I don't apologize for her. She's just dealing with this. Um, and I migrated actually very late in life uh, as an adult to the United States. I migrated for love, um, which is a story that many, many, you know, uh, can tell as well. Um, I fell in love with a Puerto Rican and we had to decide where we were going to build a family. So it ended up being here in the U.S. Um, and I migrated uh, 10 years ago. Um, and already as an adult, already as a professional, trying to, uh, I had a good basis of English, but really not professional English. So it took me a lot to find my way in, um, in you know, in the, in, in the, like find a job that I could work as a communicator in English. Uh, I was lucky to find, you know, options uh, here in South Florida um doing communications for in spanish for latinos which actually opened a big door for me uh and allowed me to um learn more and understand and be a little bit more eloquent in english because that was not i struggled a lot with it and um it took me eight years to become a citizen um it just it was longer the process um especially when you migrate you know when you come here with a visa and then you have to adjust your status. I was very privileged to be able to do that, but it does take longer than what people think. And then after that, it was um, the, the big barrier of the cost. Um, it took me a while to be able to uh, save the money to be able to pay for my citizenship, citizenship application. Um, but I finally became a citizen in 2018. In 2016, I'm sorry, in 2016, and uh, and I voted for the first time uh, in the 2016 presidential election. I have to confess that I struggled with, uh, as a new migrant, with the idea of one day becoming a citizen. I thought if I would be having to give up my Colombian citizen and who I was. Uh, and who I, you know, who I, how I identified for many, many years. And I just, I didn't know, like I was struggling with the concept until, I mean, I wasn't eligible while I was struggling, so there's nothing I could have done at that time, thankfully. But when I started becoming involved with the immigrant rights movement and hearing the stories from people about how, like there's 11 million to 12 million people um, you know, really right now uh, fighting for a chance to be able to have some status that allows them to participate more actively and be protected in the, in, in the country that, where, that they contribute to so much uh, with culture, with taxes, with work, with everything, with language. And I knew I had, I was able to have that, um, you know, I had that privilege and that opportunity to do that. And I understood that citizenship um, was not about my identity, was about my right to um, participate fully in the country that I was living in, to be able to make decisions 
in the country that I was paying taxes in and to build a better future in the country that I was going to build my family in. And, and I felt it not just as a, as a right, but also as a duty um, to do it for so many of my personal friends that didn't have that opportunity. So as the 2016 elections came and I saw that I was finally being eligible to, um, to uh, apply for citizenship and actually pay for it, um, thanks to one of Christina's first clinics <laughs> four years ago or five years ago. So I, I, I didn't hesitate and I was able to become a citizen and to register to vote right before the 2016 election. And I felt I was care. I was bringing with me to the uh, to the booth, not just me, but like my entire community. And I was voting for them, and uh, and it made me very proud. It just I am no less Colombian for being an American citizen, uh, but now I know I am fully part of this country that I'm building. Like there's a lot that you can uh you know participate on it's the local level in your community in your school in your city um and i also think it's like a believing in change a lot of the times we we know that we have a voice and that we might have a say but we just think that you know by ourselves it's like it's not going to accomplish anything so why waste our time um i think we have to believe in change um and just try it once and you'll see it like i've seen change happen literally because of actions when you know of people take you know like people standing up uh we've been able to say in broward we don't want a massive private prison in you know in our community to detain more immigrants and neighbors in southwest ranches stood up and said no and they had to cancel it um we've been able to go to tallahassee with farm workers and moms and kids and to tell them we don't want the anti-immigrant laws and they stopped them for nine ten years until recently <laughs> that they passed one uh we've been able to say you know um i i was part of you know supporting students saying hey we're immigrant students and we deserve in-state tuition uh we've been living here we just don't have a document that says that we live here but we're paying four times more it's not fair and it passed and we were able to change that um so i fully believe that we can participate and this was like 90 80 90 percent of movements of people that didn't even have a green card so imagine what we can do uh those of us that have the opportunity um to you know like use our citizenship um to lift even uh, more like our voices in our in our needs. <laughs>